Hi everyone, it's Michael and it's time for the March 2021 Orchid Collection update. Now this is once again coming about a week late. I'm so sorry for that, but unfortunately my work calendar has just become so saturated that it's exceptionally challenging to get this filmed and edited by the end of the month. So I will always give you the monthly Orchid Collection update. It just might not come at the exact end of the month. So thank you so much for your patience. Um, one gigantic thank you I have to offer is to everyone who purchased from I don't know, the, the soft launch of michaelsorchids.com. I casually mentioned Michael's Orchids had gone live um, in my Catacetum Division video, which I will link below. And within two hours of doing that, every single plant on my site sold out. I, I can't tell you, it's like, it's a dream come true. And it's so exciting to me because I have regular interface with some of you, you know, Jackson, Graziella. And when you purchase these plants and we have the opportunity to exchange information in real time about how is that plant doing? Um, how is yours faring? What techniques are you using to make sure? It's just exciting because we really get to cross-reference our experience as growers with the same plants. And it just makes me feel plugged into a really beautiful community. So thank you so much um, for supporting me in that way. Like I said, every single plant on the site sold out. There will be more added as I go through the process of dividing my existing collection and refining my collection. Um, but there are still plenty of my glass grow containers. Uh, so go ahead and check out the site. Now, having said that, let's talk about the plants. Everything has been going really, really beautifully. Some of the plants that I struggled with for a very long time have intense and sustained momentum now, and it just makes me feel so thrilled. In regard to my grow methodology this month, it is literally the exact same as last month. So I'm continuing to flush all of my orchid containers once to twice a month. In between those flushes, I am watering with a dilute nutrient solution. I'm still fertilizing with Dynagro, but I'm now supplementing with CalMag as well. So they're getting a healthy mix of both. I um, mean, they're getting it on a regular and consistent basis, which is helping to resolve a lot of those nutrient deficiency issues I was seeing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link that video below. But overall, things are just trucking along beautifully. Now, I know I talked about it a lot last month, but those little glass eggs that I invested in for my Bulbophyllum and for my Restrepia cuprea are doing exactly what I need them to do. And it makes me so excited because I'm definitely going to invest in getting a few more Bulbophyllum orchids. I'm, it just really opens me up to this whole other world because I've never been able to successfully cultivate this type of orchid in a domestic environment. And this has given me that opportunity. So without further lead in, let's just go ahead and take a look at the plants that have something new, different and interesting happening this month. All right, my friends, jumping in with number one in the collection, just look how cute it is. Now, I finally trimmed back the flower spikes. It was in bloom for months and months. And just look at the momentum it continues to sustain. It has a new leaf coming in. It's just so great to see this one so vigorous and well-established. Um, I do think it's about time to divide the basil cakey. Um, they have really evolved into two completely fully realized plants. Um, and I do think at a certain point, they're gonna start to crowd and compete. Um, if anyone has insights on this, let me know if you've left it alone and it's been fine because I do kind of like this little Gemini vibe it has. I'm just not sure that it's the most constructive to the health of the plant, but just so happy to see how well it's doing. Jumping now to number three in the collection, I called it last month, but I said, I think that this one has a flower spike on the way. Um, and this big, beautiful pseudobulb that it produced this um, past year has really just outpaced the previous growths. Again, I divided this plant really terribly and it suffered for years as a result. You can kind of see um, the collateral damage. This was the year after I divided it. This is the year following it. But this past year, it really gave me a really sizable pseudobulb and just seems so happy and so well adjusted. I'm so excited to see it bloom. Now, one of the interesting things is this one kind of caught on itself. You can see the shape of the flower spike has a bit of a hook to it. Um, and that's because it just kind of got stuck inside of itself for a while, but it pushed out. I always encourage people, don't don't try to wrestle a flower spike if it's kind of doing something like that because the greatest likelihood is that you're gonna break it. So I just waited patiently and eventually it kind of, you know, sorted things out on its own, which is really lovely. Now jumping to number four, this is my Oncostelli Everglades Elegance, Nancy Lee. And this one is just ending its bloom cycle, but look how it's just so pretty and so, you know, I have to say it's so, so lovely to have a predictable relationship with these plants. You know, once I, once they all stop struggling for survival, particularly the earlier numbers in my collection are all uh, victims of my lack of knowledge when I first started growing. So they really suffered through the brunt of my learning curve. So it's so nice now that they're not, you know, viciously struggling for their lives, they are really predictable. And it's just really nice to have that relationship and know 
when you're gonna expect blooms and that you'll always get them every time it produces a suitable. So this is just a really happy story. Also, similarly, you can kind of see the trajectory with the growth here. This plant actually got divided into three. It fell off of a shelf. The glass container it was in shattered and the plant broke into three pieces. And the trauma of that really set it back for a long time as well. And you can see the development of the bulbs. They tell such an interesting story because if you come to the base, you can see smaller bulb, smaller bulb, smaller bulb. And then you get into the next couple years of growth and look at how, oh, sorry, it's not like, it's too big. It's not letting me turn. I'm gonna have to lift it. If you get into the newer bulb growth, like look at the difference between this bulb here and this most recent bulb here, it's huge. So this one has really, really gained some momentum. I think that if I get this repotted soon, I bet I can produce some crazy gigantic pseudo bulbs. I've never, wow, I've never really had that thought before because I don't know if you've ever seen, if you go to a nursery, sometimes you'll see pseudo bulbs that are like the size of a fist or bigger. And I think this one is capable of going that way. I think I can get it to develop to that size. So let's see how this goes. Now moving to number eight in the collection. This is my Banfield Aura Mystic Maze. Again, I said, I think this will be producing a flower spike soon. And here we are. This one is so beautiful. It has those green spider-like flowers. And um, it didn't bloom last year for me because I think I completely neglected the fertilizer component for a lot of my plants. In fact, I just kind of was so busy and traveling all the time with work that I just wasn't diligent about giving nutrient solution at every watering. And, um, it showed because it didn't bloom last year, but this one, now it's just coming in full force. I'm super excited to see it in bloom again. Another happy story, number nine in my collection. This is the keiki I took from my mom's plant forever ago and then horribly mistreated, but it's finally on the up and up. Now, I know a lot of people disagree with me on this, but I do think that the deciding factor of the health of a Phalaenopsis is its ability to produce and sustain healthy aerial roots. I feel like the plant self-regulates with that. Uh, you know, if it needs water, it'll collect it from the environment. If it needs to breathe, it'll collect that from the environment. Um, so my plants, my Phalaenopsis, um, the ones that don't produce expansive aerial root systems are always the ones that don't go into spike. They're always the ones that struggle and sometimes wither and die. Um, so I'm just so excited to see that this one has really um, invested in its aerial root growth. And uh, I did just get it repotted and the repot didn't seem to impact it at all because it's putting down new roots here. I'm gonna set this down so you can see more closely. It's already producing new leads off of the old root system in the container. So it seems to have uh, accepted the repot quite nicely. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how this continues to develop and grow. Now on to number 11 in the collection. Oh, I just love you so much. This is my Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. And just look at it. Oh my God, you guys. I wish that all three were in bloom at once. It's definitely gonna happen. I'm not sure when, but it is just one of my favorite plants ever. And I actually picked this up from a nursery early on in my orchid journey with my mom. So I have this really beautiful memory of going to pick it out with her. And she said, she was like, Michael, that seems like a challenging plant. I, I don't think that this is the best way for you to start. And I was like, but I want it. Um, and I'm so happy that I didn't kill it because it has just grown to be such a prolific bloomer for me. And also, um, not only is it, you know, sustaining these three sequential blooms, it is also quite notably producing more new growths. Where did it go? Oh, right here. Do you see? Do you see this new growth poking through? That one's gonna produce another spike too. I wonder how many flower spikes I can actually get this to produce. I honestly, I don't know. This container isn't very big and I don't know how much the root system is gonna strangle itself because you can actually see it happening already. Do you see how the, like this leaf here is starting to yellow and wither? Do you see how it's getting kind of um, pruned? It's because the, the older, smaller leaves are dying off. So I, I don't know if that's something I should be concerned about. I do think it's the natural progression of things. And this does grow almost like an oncidium. So I think that it'll just start to grow out of the pot and I don't need to be super worried. But um, I'm gonna continue to monitor it. But it's just like, what a great problem to have. It's too vigorous, it's too happy and willing to grow. Now on to number 13 in the collection. This is my Phragmopedium sidenii. And what's great about this one is this one took forever, forever to even have any health, really. It was struggling. It had tons and tons of leaf dieback. But once it got established in the container, it just started to run. And I mean, it's running now because these two are both new fans. They're new growths. And I actually think that um, there's going to be a flower spike coming in. If I take you in close, I don't know if you'll be able to see it deep, deep down inside. There's just a little spike forming. And that could be another leaf, but I do think that based off of its um, previous bloom cycle, 
that it will be a flower spike. Um, so it's nice to see that this one has um, matured these new fans so quickly and that it's that vigorous. That makes me really happy. Now, who is she? You can hardly recognize her. I know, I'm so excited. This is number 16 in the collection, my Dapper Dots Nicolasa Tavares. You guys, I can't tell you how excited I am that every division found a home so quickly and found such fabulous, loving homes. Um, I'm so excited for you guys to cultivate this plant with me and kind of share your experience and your insights because, I mean, this has just become so much more manageable. Look at how cute it is. It's just, getting it rehomed in a manageable size means that I'm gonna be able to care for this so much more effectively. I've already gotten it repotted. Um, if you haven't seen how I repot my catacetum types and provide them slow release fertilizer, I will link that video below. But um, I think that we are due for a really, really fabulous grow season because all of this, all of the circumstances are right. You know, transitioning the potting medium to sphagnum moss has really helped. Uh, you know, this new grow setup is really helping. The sustained moving air is really helping. So I think that this one's gonna do incredibly well this year. Now on to number 19 in the collection. This is my Bulbophyllum Fascinator. Um, I actually took footage of this when it was at peak bloom because it was so stunning. I cannot believe that these can grow this effectively in these glass terrariums. I just can't believe I didn't think of it soon enough. But if I take you in, you can see that the bloom is just beginning to fade, but something really, really interesting is happening. Actually, I'm gonna open this up so you can see it better. Now, two major distinctions here. This flower has been in bloom for almost two whole weeks. Now, when this first bloomed for me, I don't know if you recall, it only bloomed for roughly 24 hours. And I think that's just because it didn't have enough ambient humidity to sustain that plant's growth. It just did not, these plants are not intended to bloom in environments like my very dry apartment in Los Angeles. Um, so having this, you know, this beautiful little cocoon of humidity has really empowered this flower to bloom for a longer period of time. Now, I do want to give you eyes on just how captivating this plant was at the peak of its bloom cycle. Look at the bumpy texture on the bloom. Look at the iridescent tongue. Look at the hair-like apparatuses at the top of the bloom. This is such an unusual plant with such an unusual temperament, but it is absolutely stunning. And the other thing that's crazy about this is when I did the bloom profile the first time on this plant, I said it has no discernible scent. Boy, was I wrong. Because, I don't know if it's the ambient humidity that brought out the scent profile, but for the very first time, I smell that rotting meat's signature scent of Bulbophyllum orchids. It produced the nastiest scent, and <laughs> oddly, I was thrilled about it because I've had that experience with a few plants. You know, if it ha in the past, when it's bloomed for me, it had no discernible smell, but as its health grows, as it matures, it starts to produce these intense scents. So I think the fact that this became so fragrant is a really good sign that it's healthy. The pseudobulbs are so much more plump and vigorous. So I think that this is all super positive and I'm just excited to continue cultivating this plant now that I have a, a system in this environment, you know, a domestic grow environment that really serves the needs of the plant. It makes me so excited. And speaking to serving the needs of the plant, look at its sibling. This is my Bobophyllum ambrosia. And it's just going nuts, you guys. Look at how effectively this has put down tons and tons of new growths. It is just going wild in the container. New growth, new growth, new growth. They're everywhere. Um, so this makes me super pleased. And the um, the pseudobulbs that it's producing are bigger than any of the previous growths. You can see at one point it produced this tiny, tiny little pseudobulb because it just didn't have enough momentum to really sustain it. But you can see that the new growths are much more expansive, much larger, the leaves are bigger. So again, this really seems to serve the needs of my bubble film types which means I might expand my bubble film collection. I'm really excited about that. I've actually been thinking really critically about which plants I need to keep in my collection and which plants I don't need to keep in my collection um, based off of what I can give them, you know. Now jumping to number 25 in the collection, this is my Epidendrum Green Hornet, an old trusty, an ongoing sequential bloomer. And just look at it. Oh, this one just makes me so happy because it's, you know, again, this is, this was one of the very first plants in my collection to become super predictable and just give me what I want. And it's just so happy. The flower spikes persist for so, so long, for months at a time. Um, now, uh, the thing here is that this one is also getting unmanageable and it definitely needs to be divided. I just don't want to interrupt the bloom cycle to do that. And I, I certainly don't want it investing its energy in flowers if it needs to invest in, you know, putting down a new root system and getting acclimated to a new grow container. So I'm not quite sure how I want to proceed, but I do think that there's a strong likelihood that I'm going to divide this. And of course, I will put the divisions in the store, but... It's just, this one is just happy and easy and that makes me super happy. 
Now jumping to a, a plant that I don't really showcase super often. This is my Ludicia Discolor. This is a jewel orchid. And oddly, I was growing this in a method that is not recommended for the plant. I was growing this semi-hydroponically and the plant did great. It bloomed for me. And that was the last time it bloomed for me. Um, after a while, I was like, maybe I should just transition this to, you know, it's recommended potting medium, which is generally soil. And ever since I did that, it just like has completely stalled out and not just stalled out, but really regressed. You can see, look at all the dead leaves that are falling off of this guy. And I noticed today, look at this sad, um, pruning, dying, I don't know what you call this one, a cane, a growth and a, a, a vine, I don't know. But um, it just does not seem to be doing very well. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip back, just to save the life of this one, I'm gonna clip this off and put it into some water just to get it to start producing some new roots. I actually might do that in a few different places. Um, I just am so flabbergasted that it was more productive in semi-hydroponics than it is in classic terrestrial medium. So I don't know why that is, but um, noted, and I'm just gonna go back to what I was doing because it worked a lot better. Now onto number 36 in the collection. This is my Fred Clark Yara SVO After Dark Black Pearl. And just look at this one too. I divided the old bulbs. Actually, I'll show you. I just, you know, I felt so inspired by the division of my uh, Nicolasa Tavares that I was like, you know, I just want to do the same thing for this guy. So I went ahead and divided him um, because there's pretty sizable growths coming off of it and it was getting oddly shaped in the container. So I just wanted to get ahead of the curve. Um, but this one, I got it repotted. I got it, uh, you know, all of its slow release fertilizer and it just, it's already getting to a point where I can almost start watering again. I like to wait until the roots are about three inches long um, as a signal that it's time to go, but hold on, where is it? If I take you into the container, do you see, you see the roots starting to push their way around within the moss? Now, the thing is, is I got this potted, um, you can see the root tip right there too. Uh, I got this potted into sphagnum, but I didn't start watering it yet. So I'm just allowing it to put its root system down into the dry sphagnum moss. And then that, that way, when it's time to resume watering, it's just gonna be a quick and seamless transition. So I've done that for all of my catacetum types. And I, I think this is gonna be a really great grow season. Jumping back in with number 48 in the collection, this is my Oncidium Twinkle White Pink. And just look at all these flower spikes it's producing. How exciting, so cute. But also look at the base. It's producing another um, new growth at the same time. So that's a really positive sign. This one is also, you can like look at it. It's wider than the container it's growing in. So I do think that I'm gonna need to divide it soon. Um, but it's so vigorous and so happy and healthy that I'm, I, I really don't wanna disrupt it. But this gives me such an uplifting, adorable little flush of blooms. And it's such a consistent bloomer. Very, very pleased to see this one. Now, number 47 in the collection, this is my Paphio Pedlum Maculi Curtis Napa Valley. Um, but look at, you know, it's weird because I trimmed this back because there was some leaf dye back and then it started dying back again. So if anyone has any insight as to why that might be, I don't think I'm giving it too much nutrient solution. I'm only giving it nutrient solution every other watering. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's too much. It's interesting because everywhere else, the modeling, the leaves are so vivid and so healthy, but it's just specifically right there. Um, but even so, it is just beginning to open. You can just see the, the slip of the lady slipper. It's just so interesting and wonderful. And I'm so excited to see this guy in bloom. Very much looking forward to seeing it in full presentation. Now moving on to number 48 in the collection. This is my Cymbidium Murasaki Sinense. You can see that the flower spike finally dried up, but I'm just so thrilled that I, I now understand how to get this to bloom in semi-hydroponics. Um, I have a much better reference point and I understand how critical nutrient solution is to the equation. So this one just really, really needed that CalMag in order to survive and to create this flower spike. Um, and not only to create it, but to have that flower spike come all the way to fruition. This has spiked for me before, but it just kept aborting. I'm gonna go ahead and get this flower spike cut off. I'm gonna get the old rotting pseudobulbs divided and cut off. And um, I think I'm gonna have a really great growth season with this one. Filming this one slightly out of sequence, but look at my wedding day Phalaenopsis orchids. Oh, I just love how they bloom in perfect synergy. They're so beautiful. And as basic as a white Phalaenopsis can be, I, I just so appreciate the display. Look how beautiful they are. And seeing them all bloom together just makes me so, so happy. These ones are so consistent and just so easy and vigorous. And the root systems are just so fleshy and robust and happy. So i um, thrilled to see these in bloom again. Still haven't made a decision about what I'm gonna do with all of them. Cause I, again, I'm not sure that I wanna continue caring for four of the exact same plant, but uh, this display almost makes it worth it. Look how pretty they are. Now this plant among others, and I'm gonna do a separate video about this concept altogether. 
There are certain plants that I just, I don't know that I'm equipped to give them what they need in this environment. Despite various grow methods, despite various attempts, they just don't do well where I am. And so my Miltoniopsis Burtfield Eileen is a prime example. It started to do really well when I put it in water culture and I thought, okay, here's the hack. It just wanted more moisture and it wanted cooler temperatures. So in water culture, because you know the water is conductive, if I put this by a window, it's gonna get really cold and give it exactly what it wants. And that was true during the cold months, but now that it's starting to warm up, look at this dieback. It just, it's starting to regress again. And it did produce um, tons of new growth. You can even see a little baby growth at the base. But I'm just not convinced that I can give this plant what it needs in my environment. So um, the future of this one in my collection is TBD. We'll see. Now this one's super exciting. I didn't even know that this one was in spike until the bloom opened. It was facing the wall and I just saw a peak of orange looking at me and I was like, what is that? I, I thought this plant was not doing well because of all of the spotting from the uh, magnesium deficiency, but very discreetly and very quietly, it put out this gorgeous flower spike. And I forgot how much I like this one. It's just so gorgeous and so, so happy. These little tangerine blooms are just so shapely too. Um, I'm absolutely obsessed with this plant. And you can see the growths on these ones were insane in the previous year. Um, I actually use slow release fertilizer on this plant among others. Every other plant that I use slow release fertilizer on hated it with the exception of my uh, catacetums. This one loved it and gave me gigantic canes. Um, and you can see comparatively to its previous growths, like look how slender that one is versus how meaty these bulbs are. You can also see that it's producing some new growths and these new growths are so happy, so healthy. Like look how vivid the green is. It's just perfect for a Cattleya type. Um, so it's giving me a lot of those ever since I resumed um, calcium magnesium with the plant. And so that's all very promising. This plant definitely needs to be divided because look, I mean, it's, it's growing out of the holes, it's growing out of the sides. Um, it's had its share of opportunities, but this plant is super vigorous and I think I'm gonna divide it shortly. Um, maybe just as soon as it's done being in bloom, but just look, ugh, so, so beautiful. I can't get over it. So stunning. Um, on to number 56, this is my Miltonia Sunset, which as you know, is one of my absolute favorites. Do you see the flower spike just peeking its head out right there? So that really excites me because these plants were not doing particularly well. I had one in water culture and I had one in classic sphagnum moss. But the one in classic sphagnum moss was just sitting next to the window and it did not like the temperature drops at all. So I finally pulled it away from the window. I got the other one potted um, back into sphagnum moss because it did not like water culture. So these ones, I wouldn't say that they're thriving yet, but they are on their way to thriving and that makes me super happy. Now on to number 59 in the collection kind of keeping with the theme of plants that I'm just not sure I can give them what they need. This is my Cory Macrantha X self, and this gave me the most captivating and stunning bloom one time. But the thing is, this plant is a water lover and you can't, I can't pot it in water culture. I can't pot it in semi-hydroponics or a terrarium because the flower spikes growth habit is to go straight down. So you have to pot it in a basket or something that it can dangle through and out of. And for that reason, like, listen, you hear how crunchy it is? I'm not good at keeping up with the water needs of this plant. I try to mist it, I try to soak it, but I just, I never give it as much water as it needs. And for that reason, it keeps stunting, leaves keep dying back. I just think that this plant needs to be in a greenhouse. It needs to be constantly showered. And I just, as much as I want it, it, it just is not going to thrive here. And that's a, a reality that I'm making peace with. Now jumping to number 59 in the collection, this is my Cloesia Rebecca Northern Maccabi. And as you can see, just like the other two catacetum types, I've got it repotted, I've got it fertilized. It's sitting in dry sphagnum moss as I await the plant's production of these new longer green root tips. Now I did divide this plant in the process because again, I just feel so inspired by my catacetum dapper dots, but I just think it's gonna do better. I did go ahead and divide it because look at the two previous growths and look how much smaller they are than the new bulb. It is just night and day. And I'm curious, this is kind of an experimental division because I'm so curious to see that now that they've been divided, if they're gonna produce a new lead. Um, so I'm just kind of watching this to see how it goes because I'm wondering if size really determines the catacetum's ability to sustain new growth or not. Because this plant was much smaller than this when I got it. So I think that this will probably produce a lead. Moving on to number 60, this is my Bellara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. And again, just such a happy, healthy, vigorous, consistent bloomer. It's given me this beautiful flower spike on the way and it has a new growth coming in in the dead center. So this one is just, you know, really digging its life. And it also needs to be divided because it's starting to get kind of wily. 
Um, I do think that when I repot it, I'm going to do it into just straight sphagnum moss. I find that with a lot of my thin uh, root oncidium types, they really don't like water culture and they really don't like semi-hydroponics. They just want sphagnum moss, um, which is interesting and kind of unexpected because I've had them do well in semi-hydro, but it's so inconsistent that I just feel like generally speaking, it's not my preferred potting method for this type. So, um, so happy to see it doing well, but I think it can be doing even better. And last, but certainly not least, is number 67 in the collection. And this is my Epidendrum Hybrid Rose, which continues to give me the most gorgeous flower spike. Uh, again, a sequential bloomer, just continuing to grow higher and higher. Um, but I'm also not convinced that this one loves water culture. Um, you can see it just keeps producing tons and tons and tons of roots. And even though it looks like they're dead, these are viable. The strange thing is, it just, I think... It's not even a matter of potting medium that it prefers. It just needs more stability. It, it wants to latch onto something, which you can see from, this is actually a cakey here, but it just keeps producing roots like, like nobody's business. And I think it's because this plant is viciously and desperately searching for something to anchor to. So I just think it doesn't feel super stable in the container. And I bet if I were to fill it with really, I don't wanna say anything, but I, I feel like it would do well in bark. I feel like this would do well in dirt. I feel like this would do well in semi-hydro. So I think I'm gonna get this repotted into semi-hydro and just see how that goes. I anticipate it's gonna go great, but we'll see where that carries us. And with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much as always for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Be sure to support one another in the comment section because I'm so seldom available to do so. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah. Bye friends.